Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth so viewer discretion is advised but if you're not into that or weird stuff in general this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul but I'll remember our time fondly. Why hello my little snickerdoodles. I am so excited to do today's video because I have been trying a lot of makeup this year, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So in today's video, I wanna focus on the best of the best of the best of the best of the best with honors. Of course, come back on Monday so you can see all the garbage I've tried because <laughs> that's when the worst beauty of 2022 will be posted. But today, today kids, we celebrate. Now please note, we may or may not agree on some things. Just know that you're wrong <laughs> and you will always be wrong. All right, I kid, I don't really actually, I don't care. <laughs> no, I kid, I, you know I love you, I love you. But I say that to say that everybody is a unique snowflake and we all have different wants, different needs, different skin types and what may work for me may not work for you and vice versa. So for me, these are the best of the best of the things that I've tried and I didn't waste my money on and I feel good about that. But before I get all Andy Rooney and start yelling about my love for these products, a word from today's sponsor. Thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video. Y'all know I've been talking about Upside for a while now. I love the hell out of them and so does my mom too. It took a minute, but if I got here to learn how to use it, I can teach you too. <laughs> I love that everyone who has tried Upside based on my recommendation has kind of fallen head over heels in love with savings. If you buy gas or groceries or dine out, Upside's for you. What makes Upside super special is that you'll earn cash back with every purchase. And I know I say this all the time, and obviously you know this is true, things are just getting more and more expensive. And those little treats that you look forward to are now fleeting and going away, but not anymore. Because thanks to Upside, you don't have to cut back because you can get cash back from gas, groceries, or dining out. App users can earn three times more cash back on Upside than other credit card rewards or loyalty programs. And it definitely explains why they have a 4.8 rating in the App Store, just say. Now my favorite part of Upside obviously is when you cash out. And the fact that you can cash out anytime is even more amazing. And Upside gives you options. You can choose to cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card. Now I hear you, Loretta, I hear you. You're saying, that sounds all fine and well, Teresa, but how the hell do you use it? Well, Loretta, let me show you. First to get started, you're gonna download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Then you're gonna use my promo code, whew, dead. This will get you $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Then you're gonna claim an offer on whatever you're buying on Upside. Alex and I have been doing a lot of joyriding lately, trying to find retro video game stores. By doing so, we use a lot of gas. <laughs> so today I need gas. I open the app, check for the best deal around me, and then all I need to do is click check in at the business, pay as usual with my credit or debit card, and get paid. See, how easy was that, Loretta? So easy. With the holidays upon us, every penny counts. So if you are interested, download the free Upside app and make sure to use my promo code DAD and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. So again, thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video. Y'all go support the sponsors that support your garbage queen and save yourself some money. You're welcome. <sighs> this is gonna be a very long video. Thankfully, I have more favorites than I do fails. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So with that said, we're gonna start off with foundations first. Now, actually I wanna preface by saying that there are a lot of products that I might not be mentioning today because you know they're good, but they're not like, I need to buy fucking 10 backups. There are some products here that I know I've raved about in past reviews, but for whatever reason, they haven't really hit that S tier for me. So we're gonna start off with foundations, but more specifically skin tints. At the beginning of this year, y'all know I moved to Florida, and it's in this bog ass state that I found a love and appreciation for lighter coverage options. Summer in Florida is like being in a sauna, but also having a blow dryer on your face on high at all times. It's disgusting. I sweat in places I didn't even know I could sweat in, okay? Think about it, it's disgusting. <laughs> so these skin tints for me provide the best amount of a little bit of coverage, but enough for me to not feel like I look like a fat melted candle. The first one I wanna talk about is from Summer Fridays. This is the Sheer Skin Tint. I love this product because it feels so natural. And I love that it has hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. See, I'm getting better at saying words. <laughs> My skin looks amazing when I use this product. And while you can build this up quite a bit, I think this combined with a full coverage concealer, bitch, you can't be stopped and actually kind of looks better. Some of my medium to full coverage foundations, just saying. I also love this one because it has tiger grass in it, which is perfect for those who have redness in their skin like myself. 
It's so good that I had to buy a backup recently and I regret nothing. The other one that I want to mention is from Westman Atelier, which is somehow an even smaller container than, <laughs> than the Summer Fridays. This little chode is great for those who have redness in the skin. And I hate how much I love it because it is $68. And it's funny because I usually hate things that are like serum foundations. For whatever reason, they just don't look good on my skin. It always looks like I'm dying. But the serum skin tint is so smooth and hydrating and it provides incredible radiance and brightening and it just soothes my skin. I actually also have the Westman Atelier foundation. It, that one's okay. It's good, but like it's not amazing. This blows it out of the water. This is fucking fantastic compared to that product. Now this product is very liquidy, comes out like an oil, but it doesn't have that oily feel. It melts beautifully and the best part, it lasts in the disgusting heat. I'm telling you, these two are just amazing, amazing for the bullshit heat that is down here. Now, if you're looking for something that has a little bit more coverage with great skincare benefits, might I add, you might be interested in these two products. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Dr. Jart. I feel like I just, I, do, I can't shut the fuck up about this. I, I just can't. This is the premium BB multitasker with niacinamide, blah, 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 SPF 40. <laughs> this one comes in four shades, which I know is not the best, but it's better than the previous version, which I think came in two shades. So if we wait maybe 20 years, we might have 10 to 12 shades eventually. It's a shame because I wish that more shades were available because once you try this, this is the end. It's just that good. I love the coverage on this one. It has a really beautiful medium to medium full coverage. Your skin looks bright, luminous, glowy, and it just looks like you take care of yourself at the end of the day. It looks like you drink enough water and you get over eight hours of sleep. When in reality, it does not happen for me. <laughs> so I like to fake it. Fake it while I make it. <laughs> so this allows me to fake it. So yes, even when I'm chained to my desk for nine hours doing my nine to five job, <sighs> I don't look so much like a goblin. <laughs> and that's thanks to this. The other great product I found is from Superboop and this is the CC screen. This has SPF 50 in it. So this one has SPF 40, this one has SPF 50. So this one's a little bit better, comes in 15 shades. And this is definitely a thicker milkshake type of formula. And even though it's thick, this bitch melts beautifully into the skin and it provides a nice amount of coverage. And being that she is a thick queen, she doesn't emphasize any dry patches or dry my skin out. And in addition, because it has SPF 50, it also has like apple extract. So again, helps me have like a smoother and brighter complexion. I am beyond obsessed with this one, especially on those days where my ass sees the sun. <laughs> Not my physical ass, but you know what I mean, my ass, my ass, my ass, my face, Jesus Christ, whatever, you know what I mean. I love this one because it provides just such nice protection. This has been great walking around Disney Springs when I'm literally melting <laughs> and my face starts to kind of turn a little bit red and I think to myself, oh man, I'm gonna have a sick sunburn to only find out I don't. This shit keeps me protected. So this is something that I will happily repurchase time and time again. Love the shit out of this one. Now, when it comes to foundations, I have a lot of options, like a lot, a lot, a lot. But keep in mind though, all these foundations have these things in common. They're comfortable, they don't break me out, they don't settle into my fine lines, they don't cling to any dry patches, they don't turn me into a mummy's dick, and the longevity is motherfucking amazing. These are the best of the best that I found this year. And I'm gonna start with a recent favorite, which is like a fucking surprise to me, and to you probably, but this thing. This is from the Sephora collection. This is the Perfection Mist Airbrush Foundation. Now I know this has been out for a while, but I just, I didn't try it. I just never tried it. But then a lot of people mentioned that this was very, very similar to the Dior Air Flash. Now if you didn't know, Dior Air Flash was one of the best foundations ever to be made and they discontinue it. Why? Because Dior is an asshole. That's why. So I have been heartbroken, but not anymore because I found this thing. This, it's a little weird because when I first got it, the cap kind of flew off. And of course, when I spray it into my hand, it's extra cold, almost criminally cold to the point where I think I'm gonna get frostbite. But I don't even give a shit though because when I put this on my face, it was literally air flash. I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm in love. I'm in love. And the fact that this is $20 compared to, I believe it was $62 air flash, Dior can go fuck themselves, okay? Because this is the clear winner. Now, of course the color is a little bit off. That's probably my only complaint about it. I could still wear it, but it's different from the Dior air flash. But what I like about this one is that it just turns me into a porcelain doll. I just look perfect, creepy vibes and all. It's light, comfortable, and provides excellent coverage, like amazing medium full coverage. The only negative I probably have, again, kind of like the Dr. Jart, it just comes in five shades. So if you're not a part of those five shades, you're never gonna really know how beautiful this product is. So I'm hoping that maybe they'll expand or, I mean, I don't know, but this exceeded my expectation and the fact that it was $20, like, Fuck me up, love it. The next 
one that I have loved is from Kosas. And this was like kind of like a surprising one for me. This is the Skin Improving Foundation. This has SPF 25 in it. This one has natural finish and is a great medium coverage option. I really loved how it blurred my skin. And I love all the good skincare ingredients that is in the formula. It has squalene, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide. Now the colors were probably the most challenging thing in this formula. So I would recommend trying to shade match in the store because online I think the one that I got was like really funky. Just I was like no this is a no. So this is something that you definitely need to go see in store. And speaking of that issue I want to talk a little bit about the Makeup Forever HD Skin Undetectable Stay True Foundation. I again was so heartbroken when I heard that they were going to be discontinuing their original formula. Their original formula is one of the first foundations I've ever tried when I started getting into makeup and it's just been a staple. It's been a staple and I love it. It's my ride or die. And I'm happy that the new one is just as good, but it's a little bit different. The tones are way fucking off, like off, off, off. And even when I got shade matched in the store, the sales associate was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> She had no idea what the fuck was happening. No one did in that Disney Springs store. Nobody did. It's weird. But once you find the right color, it's perfect. It's so good. The formula is on the thicker side, but still very, very easy to work with. And you can get a nice high medium coverage without it looking cakey. But the best part for me is that this has probably the best longevity. I think out of all of the products I want to talk about, the longevity on this one is sick. It's excellent in the heat. It's another one that just lasts. When it does break apart, it gradually fades away and it looks natural. This is so good. Another one that is a favorite of mine, like a recent favorite, is uh, from Shantakai. This is the Future Gel Skin Foundation. This retails for $82. I know. <laughs> She's expensive, but dare I say she's worth every penny. While this one is not super great in the heat, this is perfect for the weather that's gonna be coming up in the next week for me. She is kind of like fall to spring vibes. <laughs> Summer, she's a no. This gel foundation is cooling and hydrating. And as it melts into your skin, it gives you like your skin but better vibes. And what's nice about this one too is that no matter how much you put on, you never look cakey. This makes me look absolutely perfect. It's kind of very similar to this in the sense that it makes it turns me into like a porcelain doll. This is so good. But the one that I really, really love, like I really love, yes, the last two I'm kind of super obsessed with. And the first one is from NARS. This is the Light Reflecting Foundation. This is a medium coverage foundation that has a natural finish and it's amazing at covering up redness. So when I was leaving New York, actually the day before I left New York, I had to do a couple of different errands and I remember I had to go to Sephora and I had to return something and I saw that they had these in stock. Now my Sephora when I was in Queen was the one in Forest Hills which was a great store. <sighs> I miss that store. And uh, when I went in there the sales associate saw me looking at this and was like oh hey you want to get shade matched? I was like yeah absolutely. And we shade matched me. I am 2.5 Yukon if you are uncooked chicken like myself. And I remember her putting it on and it just looked so fucking good. It looked so good. I was like oh my I didn't even have any primer on my face. I had nothing. Literally just skincare and it just looked so beautiful. I was like I can't even believe I look like this. <laughs> so I knew from that moment like oh this is this is going to be like one of the best things I've ever found. I'm on my second bottle. I bought a backup one. I love this. And this would have been my number one had it not been for House Labs. Okay I'm just obsessed. I have not fallen so hard in love with the foundation. Actually that's not true. <laughs> the KBD Good Apple Foundation still is like ugh, holds a special place in my heart. But I think I think House Labs rules them all. I think it does. I don't have a bad thing to say about this foundation except that it's perfect. I'm kind of like in between 50 and 70. It's actually what I have on my face today. <sighs> Bitch, I'm in love. It looks natural. It looks flawless. It's one of those foundations that somehow looks better as you wear it, which I didn't even think could be possible. It shouldn't be possible, but it is. Technically, you should look like a flesh puddle of goo <laughs> at the end of the day. This just makes you look better. It's like a fucking bottle of wine. I'm like, I just get better and better with age. I just love it. And if they don't come out with a concealer, I will lose my goddamn mind. But this is just so comfortable, so lightweight. It has great coverage, great longevity. This is everything, everything. Again, if they don't make a concealer, it's a huge fucking mistake. Or if they do make a concealer and it's terrible, I will be heartbroken. <laughs> but anyway, I would say this is my number one. I'm followed by NARS. NARS is so good too. They're both really good, but oh, house labs I love. I love them so much. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to some concealers. And I actually found quite a few good options this year. Now, a little bit about me. I'm dry, criminally dry. And I have a few student loan stress lines. And sometimes a concealer can emphasize what I will look like when I die. <laughs> but I digress. 
So for me, a concealer that is considered a home run has to be hydrating, long wearing, comfortable, and doesn't crease throughout the day. And most importantly, motherfucking conceals. Like I want this to conceal all my sins. And trust me when I say I have a lot of them. I also like to keep the illusion that I'm young. <laughs> Don't we all, don't we all, we'd be lying if we said otherwise. So for the concealers, I have two sections. I have ones that look great for the under eye and then the other ones look great for the rest of my face. So the first one I wanna talk about is from KBD. This is the Good Apple Concealer. So like I mentioned, I love that foundation. One of the best foundations I've ever tried. And when this came out, I was like, God, if this is not gonna go good, this is gonna be bad. And I'm so happy that it worked out really well for me. So this one technically has a natural finish. It's a super long wearing, super brightening and it's very, very hydrating. This bitch is full coverage to the max. I love it and I'm obsessed with it. I love when I put this on, I know that nothing will move or settle. Everything just stays in place. It doesn't sit on top of the skin, it melts into the skin and it just, it looks perfect. I love that this is so reliable and I know that nothing is gonna fucking move and that's why I love this one. But the other one that is so good for the face is from Charlotte Tilbury. <laughs> And this is the Beautiful Radiant Concealer. This one is so brightening. It's just, it's absolutely delicious. It's radiant, it's brightening, it's hydrating. And it makes my under eye area look plump like a hot dog. Bitch, I love this. I think it's a shame that the foundation didn't work for me, but who the fuck cares? Because this is perfect. It has a medium coverage, perhaps maybe a high medium coverage that just brightens and lifts my chunky little face. This is amazing and again, has incredible longevity. The other one that is fantastic and like I can't even believe it half the time is <laughs> it's from Jones Road. I don't understand that brand. I just don't and everything that I've tried from the brand has just been weird but this has like been the best fucking thing <laughs> ever. So this is called the face pencil and this is fantastic. Do yourself a favor when you buy this or if you do buy this make sure you get the sharpener too because you're gonna need it. You're gonna find yourself sharpening this shit a lot because that's how much you use it. Now I should preface by saying this when it comes to concealers even the concealers that I mentioned I still have to set them down because while I can get some pretty good wear at them because I notice that they tend to crease here and there a little bit, right? Of course, when I pat it out with a finger, it's fine, but I find that once I set them down, they don't do that at all. Now with this pencil, I don't have to set my face with this. I love that it's buildable. I love that it's comfortable. And I love that it just looks like my skin, but better. I have some serious dark circles under my eyes because I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> and this pencil just does wonders for that area. I just love the overall look and feel with this one. And of course, the last one I wanna mention for the under eye area, which is kind of a newer one, is the Dior Backstage Concealer. This is a weird one because the doe foot on this one is technically a little brush. It's a little tiny brush. And I was like, oh, okay, like this is interesting. It definitely makes for a more unique experience when putting on concealer for sure. But I love this formula. It's radiant, it's hydrating, and it's super long wearing. Although it's a medium coverage. I would classify this as a high medium coverage. I like this formula a lot because my under eye area looks super energized and it does a great job at concealing my dark circles. And it really makes me want to try the Dior Backstage Foundation after trying this one out, which I will do that on my uh, list of things to try. Now, the other two concealers that are my favorite concealers, but really more for the face. I have like everything like in a bowl, <laughs> grabbing shit out of a bowl. Ah, it's like a candy dish. Anyway, so this one is from Milk Makeup. This is the Future Fluid all over cream concealer. This looks awful under eyes. Like it just, it looks like I'm dying. I hate it. But all over the face, bitch, it's so good. It's so good. It brightens, it carves. It's full motherfucking coverage. So this is perfect with some of the lighter coverage options that I mentioned. This would be like a perfect candidate for that. The formula is so hydrating and comfortable and it just does a really good job at concealing all my bullshit. This is awesome. I just wish that I liked how it looked under the eyes. I don't like it everywhere else wonderful and last but not least oh this is so good too i think this is like my third tube of this ever since discovering it this is from bobby brown this is the skin concealer stick well it's not super bad under the eyes like it's okay i actually kind of prefer the jones road stick to this one but when it comes to all over the face bitch it's so good again i feel like i keep repeating myself but it's like hydrating it carves it shapes my face provides excellent coverage and it just blends so beautifully like ah oh, so good and and this concealer is great for spot concealing. Again, this one mixed with a skin tint or the Milk Makeup mixed with the skin tint is utter perfection. But these are two that I will always buy because when it comes to foundations and such, like I don't like to go heavy handed because I find that if I go heavy handed, it kind of becomes cakey and all that bullshit. That's why I always look for 
these types of products because they can kind of fill in the areas where I do get a little extra redness, which is usually like right around here. I don't know why. I think all my emotions just kind of get flushed there. <laughs> It's just like a fucking red ring. It is the most annoying thing in the world. Happy, sad, upset, whatever. Like any emotion I have, fucking, ju I just turn red. So I love that this just really conceals my shit. So as I'm anxious during meetings, <laughs> Especially when I have to present on something that I don't feel that comfortable with uh, while my chest is super red. This looks good, baby. <laughs> From here up, we are good. <laughs> anyway, those are all my foundations and concealers and my skin tints and BB creams and all that bullshit. Those are all my favorites. So now we're gonna move on to powders. Now when it comes to powders, there are three things that I have been loving. And the first one, are we surprised, is from House Labs. This rebrand has been everything. And I look forward to what they do next year. And if they keep up this momentum, sky's the limit, baby. They're gonna be the best fucking brand out there. Now this is the Bio Blurring Setting Powder. This is so pretty. I love this powder. It's lightweight. It gives you that soft focus look and feel, and it's just perfection. I'm very, very picky when it comes to my powders. I often find more problems than anything when it comes to powders, but this one just says everything that I want. It doesn't dry me out or bake me. It's not heavy feeling, and it provides incredible coverage, and it increases the longevity of my makeup. It's fucking fantastic. I'm so in love with this powder. And while I don't like how it looks under my eyes, because it's a little too drying under the eyes, around my face, especially my nose, this is perfection. I usually can tell if a powder or a foundation will work for me, depending on how it sits on my nose. And this, I could use so much powder, it will never look horrible. It will always look like there was no powder on my nose. And that's what I like about this powder. It doesn't look like I'm wearing powder. I love it. This is so good, this is my second jar. Like, ugh. Oh. I'm in love. If they ever stop making it, I will be truly upset. <laughs> By the way, this is the shade Translucent. So the other powder I want to talk about is Perfect for the under eyes. Now for my under eyes, I'm very bougie, right? And I have to have a separate powder for that. And initially I was very, very sad because I assumed that I would spend my whole life searching for the best under eye powder. I was in love with the Becca one, which I still have two left, by the way. When they went out of business, I was so upset, but I was upset even more when I found out that Smashbox was gonna be releasing some of their products. So while we get champagne pop for the thousandth fucking time, they decided to stop selling the best under eye powder ever to exist. So, when Charlotte Tilbury decided to release the Airbrush Brightening Powder, I was a little excited, but I was also a little trepidatious. <laughs> bitch, I fell in love. This brightening powder, bitch, it's so good. It's so good. This brightens my under eye area and conceals all my bullshit. And I love this, especially with a medium coverage concealer. This becomes full coverage in like no time. And I like that it creates that full coverage moment without suffocating my skin. This powder is so smooth and light and bright. It's overall just so happy. And I'm doing a number on this one because I'm already starting to see a huge like dent in it, which is fine because I went and I bought a backup one during the Sephora sale because I know I'm going to be running through this quite soon. Now, in theory, I could totally set my face with this and it's fine, but I do look a little bright, like really bright. <laughs> which is kind of cute in a way, you know, but also kind of alarming, uh, <laughs> but I can set it with it. But I choose to just really use this for the under eye area. I think this under eye, perfection. And then the last powder I want to use is a recent favorite, and that is from Kaleidos. So Kaleidos came out with the Symphony Face Illuminator, and this is a great product for setting the face and the under eye area. The only difference I would say from this to the Charlotte Silberry is that this one doesn't have that brightening feature. This one just looks like your skin. The powder is so soft. It doesn't dry me out. It doesn't emphasize any dry texture or anything like that. It reminds me of like an hourglass powder in a way. It kind of gives you that glow from within without turning like super matte. Again, also looks really good under the eye, but I think I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury one because I do love that pop of brightness. But in any case, like this is just a really good overall face powder as well as an under eye powder. This is just all over really good. And a, such a pleasant surprise considering when Kaleidos first released like their contour trio, it was just kind of, it was just okay. This has been just, oof, fucking amazing, which I will talk about their bigger kind of contour palette soon. But if you're just looking for a good overall powder from the face, this is really amazing. So I wanna switch gears and I wanna talk about some setting sprays. There are three setting sprays that I found this year that I just, I fucking, I love, I love them. The first one is from Rare Beauty. This is the four in one, always an optimist spray. I love it because on the off chance that I overpowder my face, this is the thing that brings me back to life. 
This spray helps hydrate and refresh my skin. And I cannot say enough good things about it. This is like a really proper hydrating setting spray. I will happily pick this one up because I was a little like apprehensive about and this is kind of what it looks like right now. It kind of looks a little bit gross. <laughs> this is what it normally looks like when it's full. But as you can see, I've been using the shit out of it. So that's why it looks like that. This is amazing. So this is from Ritual to Feed. This is their Thorn Milk Hydrating Skin Mist. Now I was a little apprehensive about using it at first because while it looks really fucking cool, you think, okay, you're gonna be red stuff all over my face. That's not the case. When you do spray this on, it goes into a gentle mist and it just sets and locks your shit in. Now you can totally use this as a part of your skincare prep. And that's what I started to do initially. But then when I realized how good it was as a setting spray, I was like, okay, fuck this. <laughs> I'm using this only as a setting spray. So I love the skincare part of it, right? Because it keeps my skin hydrated. It suits my redness. And as much as I love that, I just think as like for a setting spray, it's just so good. Another one that is just a proper hydrating setting spray that locks everything into place while also maintaining just a beautiful level of hydration. This one's great. It's a little funky, yes, but rest assured, it's not going to like Jackson Pollock your face, right? And it's not gonna be like red splatters everywhere. Like it just melts so beautifully. My only complaint is that this is not big enough. I, I need it to be like this big. Ritual Defeat, please get on that. Thank you. The other one that I want to mention is the Melanie Mills Hollywood Setting Spray. This spray is that bitch. If you're looking to have nothing move on your face, this is it. My only complaint is that it smells awful and the fact that I can smell it is pretty bad. <laughs> Just do yourself a favor and don't be like me and have your mouth open. <laughs> while you spray your face and you will be fine. This does not taste particularly good. But regardless, the smell dissipates after a few seconds or so. And what happens is, is you're locked. You are just fucking locked and ready to go. This is amazing in the heat. This stuff is so good. I don't find myself having to do touch-ups throughout the day. Like this shit will keep you locked and ready. This is definitely a staple in the heat. Now let's move on to face palettes. <sighs> Boy, do I have some face palettes for you. There were many good ones this year. And uh, actually I recently talked about some of these in a video that I did in November, talking about like my fun size reviews, basically, cause I tried on so many different products. I let you know if I was still continuing to like them and so forth and so on. So I recently talked about some of these, so I'm not gonna go too in depth because I don't know about you, but how many times can I say something is pigmented? How many times can I say the longevity is great? After a while, like the words mean nothing to me. <laughs> It means nothing and I've been only doing this for like an hour so far and I'm nowhere near the fucking middle of my list. So think about that. Anyway, so with that said, let's talk about some top-notch products that I love this year. Starting with Hourglass, hands down, this is the best holiday release this year. I love that I was able to get the custom packaging because the thought of having butterflies anywhere near me freaks me the fuck out. So I have the butterfly palette inside, but I have the cool ass tiger outside. I do also have the elephant palette as well and that one's good too. This one's better, especially if you look like me, uncooked chicken. Now the butterfly version has two finishing powders, two strobe powders, and two blushes. I love everything about this palette. The formula is great, the colors are great, and it doesn't dry me out when I use the powder on my face to set my face. This is perfect. And the Celestial Light Strobe Highlighter is so blinding, bitch. I don't even know if you could see this. It's so good, it's so good. Which I do apologize that I'm actually not gonna be swatching. That's actually gonna be the only swatch I do. Uh, <laughs> and the reason for that is initially I wanted to like swatch and do everything, but I'm having a really bad flare up of eczema on my arms, hence why I'm wearing a sweater. And I hate it. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? It's not gonna be good, putting makeup on top of it. So unfortunately, sorry, if, you, if you're here for swatches, I'm not gonna be swatching it for you, baby. You're just gonna have to believe me. <laughs> but I'm sure you can find pictures and watch other videos and all that bloopity blah blah nonsense. So yeah, unfortunately, you're just gonna have to believe me. <laughs> anyway, I have to say though, this is probably the best Hourglass holiday palette you have ever existed. This is worth every goddamn penny. And if you go to hourglass.com, you can get the custom packaging. Just saying. This is so good, so fucking good. Now, the other one, which is kind of a surprise, even to me, is from Jouer. I know, Jouer kind of came out of left field with these. You have a cool blush duo, a blush and bronze duo, my apologies, and you have a warm one. So initially I tried the warm one and then I went off for the cool one. It doesn't matter which one you get, they're both perfect. Even for a warm one, which technically I don't really like a lot of warm tone bronzers because they just look weird on me. This is a perfect warm tone for those that really like a neutral or a cool tone option. I'm sure if you like really, really warm things, this is not gonna be for you. <laughs> the formula is great. They are so soft. It's such a delicate formula. It's so smooth and it just looks so 
beautifully natural. It's that beautiful vacation glow that just doesn't look orange and off-putting. I was pleasantly surprised with these and it actually took me back to 2018, which sometimes is not necessarily a bad thing. So we like that. The other face palette, which I am like even still surprised that I'm like obsessed with this still, is from Natasha Denona. I know, who would have thought? This is the My Dream Cheek Trio. This is the blush and highlighter palette. This whole collection was a home fucking run. Everything from the eyeshadow palette to the lip products, everything was perfect. And I don't think in my experience reviewing the brand or using the brand, I have ever felt such love <laughs> where everything was just fantastic. I always shit on this brand so much. So the fact that I'm literally like just clutching this shit, like if someone tried to take it from me, I would literally claw their eyes out. <laughs> says a lot, okay? This one has a cream blush. It has like a creamish kind of highlighter and a powder highlighter. Everything's perfect. I'm actually specifically surprised with the cream blush because last year they released a holiday palette and that blush is terrible. It lifted immediately. So the fact that this even stays on for about eight to 10 hours is a fucking win in my book. I love the highlighters. They're very glowy. They're very slutty. Everything about this palette is perfect. Even to the beautiful nude packaging, this is just so good. I love this one. The other one I wanted to mention, which I know I talked kind of briefly about when I was talking about the Kaleidos Illuminator powder is this is the symphony contour trio this is in the shade light so you have that same illuminator powder and then you have like these two contour colors so you have like a lighter one and then you have a darker one the contour on the lightest one is like a nice cool tone option that doesn't leave me looking dead we love that. And I really love the darker contour as well. It's just so pretty. Actually, the combination of the two really, really create a lot of depth and dimension in your face. It basically makes me look like I work out. We love that for me, considering I don't. <laughs> Honestly, from the cool futuristic packaging, which is like a fucking 10 out of 10, to the softly milled formula, this is a motherfucking staple and I will happily repurchase this when I hit pan. This has been such a beautiful upgrade from that one contour palette that they put out that was just okay. This exceeded my expectations and then some. And I've just been loving what Kaleidos has been doing lately. They've just been, ugh, just killing it. And I cannot wait to see what they do in 2023. And the last palette that I want to mention is from Charlotte Tilbury. And this one kind of grew on me. So first when I tried it, I was like, I don't know about how I feel about this one, but it took me a bit because I realized it was a me problem, not a Charlotte Tilbury problem. So this is the beautifying face palette. This is in Pillow Talk, which is like, you know, they're fucking bread and butter, obviously the thing that will never die. When I first used this, I was like, where is the pigment? Where is it? Hello? Hello, hello, is this thing on? Can't find you. But then I realized it was the brush that I was using. Since then, kind of finding that stiffer brush really helped me get the product up. And when I put it across my face, it just looks beautiful. I love how this looks on my skin because it just looks so natural and effortless. And I love the highlighters. They're not quite the same formula as their single highlighter that came out earlier this year which is one of my fucking favorites. These are more of like a demure alien slut, but still an alien slut nonetheless. But yeah, this bitch grew on me. So this retails for $75 and listen, if something doesn't work for me, I have no issue returning something because I'm like, no, fuck that. This is my money. <laughs> but I'm glad that I gave it the old college try because now I absolutely fucking love it. I swear, Charlotte Tilbury comes up with some cool shit. And lately I've just been really enjoying the brand. And ugh, even though I make fun of Pillow Talk all the time, I really like it. Like I'm actually kind of surprised how how many good products I've been finding from the brand. Actually, ooh, you know what? There is one thing I wanna mention, that this is actually a recent, recent, recent fave, and this is from Creature Cosmetics. So I recently talked about the Trick or Treat collection. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the corner there. And the one thing that I was kind of just like really, really impressed by is this palette. This is the Carve Your Face palette. I hate the packaging. The packaging is kind of silly. I hate that it's this magnetic bullshit. I feel like it's just gonna fly off and I hate it. That said, these contour powders, they're so fucking good. They're so good. And these orange blushes are amazing. These contours are really good for those that are looking for that cool tone option. And these pumpkin blushes, not only is the formula great, but it's just so fun to play with. It's that perfect kiss of orange. Orange is such a bright color. And I find that sometimes it can be a little bit overpowering and just looks really kind of garish and just like, uh, like no thank you clown. <laughs> but this is just like, it's so oddly natural too. It's weird. Like this was a lot of fun to play with. I love turning myself into a fun little candy corn. This was really cute. I hate the packaging, but I think the execution of the products is really good. And it makes me excited to try more stuff from Creature Cosmetics. So yeah, it's a lot of fun to play with and I've been loving the results. So yeah, recent favorite. So moving on to bronzers and contours. I have a lot of good ones I tried this year. And it was probably the year of the blush and bronzer for me. The best thing I can say about all of these formulas is that they're just, they're amazing. Now the undertones will either fall under cool or neutral. I am not a warm tone fish. I don't like warm tones on me because it just looks like 
like a Cheeto. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with warm leaning bronzers, I just don't like how they look on me. So that said, these are all either gonna be cool or neutral. Across the board, none of these little babies are patchy and I didn't experience any bullshit when using them. They're easy to work with, again, have incredible longevity and they turn you into a beautifully cooked chicken. The powdered bronzers are just so softly milled and just, oh, wonderful. And they don't feel chalky and dry, like they have none of that bullshit. They just feel like utter perfection. Butter in powder form. As for the creams, those feel like butter. They melt into the skin and they don't fuck up anything underneath. It just looks like perfection. I will happily repurchase any of these little motherfuckers if they get lost, but rest assured all these babies are coming into the makeup graveyard with me. Starting with cream bronzers first. Uh, the first one I want to mention, which is one that I'm actually kind of sad about because you can't get it anymore. It's from Makeup Revolution. I know, I know. And they <laughs> And this is the Simpsons Liquid Bronzer. I know, I can't believe I'm saying this either. This is probably one of the best Makeup Revolution products I've ever tried. And I'm actually low key embarrassed how this has a chokehold on me. <laughs> it's so good. But because you cannot find this one, right? I do want to point out that if you were interested in getting the Milani Liquid Contour, the Conceal and Perfect, this is like, I would say probably the dupe to the Charlotte Tilbury contour stick or the contour wand, I'm sorry. This is that formula. It reminds me of it. It's soft, it's beautiful. It melts wonderfully into the skin and the shade 01 Honey is such a good cool tone neutralish option. This is perfect. So while you can't get this, you can get this and this is gonna fucking exceed your expectations and then some. This is awesome. Now, <laughs> this is kind of a surprise, right? Like, I mean, I was blown away. I wanna talk about a little bit about the Say Bronzer, the Sun Melt bronzer holy shitticles this is amazing now i have not liked a lot of stuff from this brand more so than often i'm shitting on them but i think when it comes to blushes and bronzers they're fantastic their cream blush is really good this one is actually so much better this goes on so beautifully it's creamy it melts into the skin and honestly no wonder why it's always sold out this is a fucking staple this is fantastic i really enjoyed the abh cream bronzer however the undertones I fucking hate because it just looks like I have jaundice no matter what color I have tried and I realized I don't really reach for them as much and I kind of want to declutter them but I was always holding on to them because I really while the color wasn't the best for me I've always enjoyed the formula that was until I discovered this like this is just oh do yourself a favor try this you will not fucking regret it it makes sense why it's always sold the fuck out so good this one is actually a recent favorite and I'm so glad that I finally got to try it this is from Chanel this is the less beige. I don't know why I had to say it like that. Less beige. Soul tan, soul tan, whatever. It's the healthy glow bronzing cream. I've heard so many things about this and I recently got to try it with my points from Ulta and I'm so glad that I did because this was worth every goddamn point used from the formula to the color. Like this has been a recent fave, but I understand why people love this product so much. I haven't experienced any weird issues with it just yet. That's why it's a recent fave. I love the formula and the color of this one. I haven't discovered any issues with it as of yet. I was a little nervous because apparently there's some coconut in it. I usually have sometimes an aversion to coconut, but so far so good. So I'm fucking happy about this one. This one's good, worth the money. The other cream bronzer that I really, really liked was from Charlotte Tilbury. So this is the Beautiful Skin Cream Bronzer. This is in the shade Fair. This, I would say out of all of them is probably the stiffest formula. However, when applied into the skin, it melts beautifully. You're able to blend it out. It doesn't get stuck. It doesn't stay in one place it really melts. It just feels very, very stiff. So you automatically think it's just not gonna work, but trust the process, it melts beautifully into the skin. Love this one. But then I have my absolute motherfucking favorite. And that is from Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. This is by far the creamiest one out of the bunch. This is probably the most hydrating one as well. Now, Mario released two products with the same name. There was one that is a powder version. Honestly, I still don't understand what the fuck that product does. I don't like it. It, it doesn't really do much of anything for me. I'm probably gonna declutter that one. But this, this was like a fucking gem, a gem. I think this is perfect for those that don't really love too much bronzer or want a bronzer that looks incredibly natural. This gives me that sun-kissed look without the melanoma. That's, <laughs> that's probably the best way that I could describe this. This is that moment. Again, the powder, I don't quite understand, but the cream is just everything. I love 
how when I apply it, it's super hydrating. It blends beautifully in with the foundation and it doesn't look like I have bronzer on my face. It looks like I was sun kissed. So beautiful. Now, the other product that I really enjoyed from Makeup by Mario as well is the Soft Sculpt Bronzing Stick. This one has a very beautiful neutral undertone and I love the little brush that it comes along with it. This works really, really well. However, as much as I do love the brush, I still kind of prefer to use my other brushes that I tend to use for cream products. But still, if you don't have a lot of good cream brushes, this one I feel like is pretty good. But this one is also a really good cream product. And a recent favorite at that. Now comparing the two though, I think the skin enhancer is better because I just feel like this just feels so much more natural on my skin. This one you could tell that I'm wearing bronzer. Still very beautiful but I think this one is just more special. Now, moving on to powders. The first two I wanna mention are from ColourPop, our Lord and Savior ColourPop. They came out with two great bronzer options this year. First is the matte bronzer. This is in the shade of Villa Beach. This is so good. While yes, it's a matte bronzer, it's not a shockingly, suffocatingly matte bronzer. There's life in this one. I love the color, I love the look and feel, and for $14, you can't be mad. But if you want something a little bit cheaper, and albeit, I feel like I actually kinda like this one a little bit better, but I still think they're both fantastic. There's a Super Shock bronzer. I love this one so much more than the e.l.f. bronzer. This is so creamy and dreamy, and it's just so perfect. Although I'm not gonna lie, I do wanna try the new e.l.f. one because I think it's hydrating, so I wanna see if there's a difference. But the formula on this is just so so smooth. This is in the shade Get Sandy, which I believe is their lightest shade or second lightest. Fucking fantastic. And one more beautiful, affordable option, which has kind of been out for a minute, but I discovered it this year. This is from L'Oreal. This is the Lumi Bronze. Bitch. Okay, this is a fucking great cool tone option. This is so good. If you are fair like me, where you just look like a plastic bag filled with teeth and hair, this is so good for you. This is so good for you. I love this shit so goddamn much. This is definitely one of the best cool tone options I have seen in a long time and the fact that it's $14.99 is even fucking better. It's considered a radiant bronzer but it doesn't have a like shimmer in it so it's like the perfect radiant bronzer. This is fucking everything. I would love this so goddamn much. If you can go get this. You will not be disappointed. Speaking of great radiant bronzers, I'm obsessed with the glowish line from Huda Beauty. Huda, baby, this is good. Not everything I like from you, but this is amazing. I would say the difference between the glowish bronzer versus the L'Oreal, the Huda has a satin feel to it as opposed to L'Oreal, which kind of has more of like a powder feel, but both are fantastic. The next one that I've really enjoyed, it's from House Labs. Again, I cannot stress enough how much I have thoroughly enjoyed the House Labs rebrand. I think everything I've tried with the exception of like the pigment paint, which is just a product that's just not meant for me. It's too new wave for me. That's right. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. It's too new wave for me. I want to be that bitch, but I know I'm not that bitch and I don't pretend to be that bitch. That said, the House Labs, the Velvet Bronzer, bitch, bitch, this is so good. Okay, so this is in the shade Light Level 2. I was so apprehensive when swatching it because I was like, oh, this is, this is not gonna end well. But on the skin, it looks so good. So on swatch, it kind of looked a little warm and on the skin, it definitely had a much more neutral tone to it. So good. This is beyond impressive. Now the last thing that I want to mention is from One Size. I love their products. All their products that I've, I've been trying so far, I have thoroughly enjoyed. And I think when it comes to their powder products, they are one of the best brands out there. And I love this little made for shade bronze and sculpt trio. Bitch, this is so good. The fair shades are perfect for uncooked chicken. I love the pan embossing. They're so cute. And I love how this little trio provides a lot of depth and dimension in my little chunky face. Oh, you know what? Actually, I take that back. I do have one more that I want to mention. And that is from Adept. They recently released face palettes. And technically this should have belonged in the face palette section, but I only really use one part of this palette, but I love it so much. That's why I want to mention it. If you're in the market for a beautiful neutral bronzer, this is your bitch right here. Now, don't get me wrong. The highlighters are perfect. They're just fucking way too dark for me. And it is what it is. It's fine. But this, if they sold this as a single, bitch, they would be sold out. It's amazing. I love how soft this powder is. And I love how it just blends so beautifully to really give you that natural bronze look. So good. Oh shit. You know what? I take that back. I do have one more product. I told you it's the year of the bronzer. This last one that I want to mention, it's another brand that I just want to love, but I never found the right product for me. That was until I found this. So this is from Nabla. This is their skin bronzing. This is in the shade Ombra. This is wonderful, wonderful. This is probably one of the more unique ones that I mentioned today because this kind of has that beautiful wet dry formula or like that 
kind of baked gelée-ish kind of a feel to it. It's so hydrating and beautiful and another bronzer that just looks radiant without having any sort of glitter attached to it. This is like the perfect summertime glow. This is fucking wonderful. So honestly, yeah, you cannot go wrong with any of those options. They're all fantastic. So yeah, I found a lot of amazing, amazing bronzers this year and these do not disappoint. So I uh, definitely go check them out because they are worth it. So yeah, honestly, you can't go wrong with any of these products. They are all so goddamn good. Anyway, let's move on to blushes. This is another heavy category and all the blushes I will mention are absolutely fantastic. They have great formula. They're super easy to work with. They have beautiful colors. They provide extraordinary dimension to complete the look and have outstanding longevity. I love them all and I would happily repurchase them time and time again. Since this video is long, I'm tired of saying pigmented. <laughs> I'm just tired of saying it. Ah, so I'm gonna speed run this one a little bit. Let's start with NARS. Even while this bitch is falling apart, okay? <laughs> This is fantastic. I love this little palette. This is the Star Cheek palette. This has excellent formula and I'm beyond obsessed with this one blush. Oh my God, this blush is so good, it's so good. But I do love all the tones in here. The only thing that doesn't really work for me quite well is the highlighter, but whatever, it's forgivable. The rest of the blushes are just so beautiful. I get another one that kind of has like that baked gelée-ish type of formula, right? It's like a baked blush so good and I cannot stop wearing it. Now, if you're looking for a nude moment, I highly recommend the nude prism blush from Lunar Beauty. This is fantastic. She's dainty, she's soft, she's everything. I like this palette because it's super elegant and there's something so understated about nude blush. Ah, oh, bitch, it gets my heart racing. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either one of the blush books from Lunar Beauty, but this one I feel like is more unique and it's just, ah, oh, it's so good. Then of course, I mean, like I mentioned, one size when it comes to their powder products, they are heaven, but these little guys are so much more. So these little cheek clappers technically have two types of formula. Well, three types of formula, really. You have a cream up here, and you have like a matte powder, and then you have like a glowy type of powder. Each one of the products independently are beautiful on their own. When used together, they're fantastic as well. Cannot say enough good things about one size, especially these little blush boys. They are so good. I have literally three colors in these. My favorite though is very that. <sighs> so pretty. I need more of these stats. Speaking of having to buy them all, <laughs> I had to buy all these little benefit ones. I love them. They come in two different sizes. So you have like the full size, the big boy, and you have the little boy. <laughs> Doesn't matter which boy you get. They're both really good. What I like about this is one, not only is the formula just really beautiful and they're just so fun to fucking use, but I love the packaging on these. Usually benefit is known for their bulky, not aesthetically pleasing packaging, but these are just so much more. Who would have thought if you just removed that stupid fucking Barbie brush, these would be the sexiest little things ever. Now there are two different formulas for the Benefit Wonderful World Blushes, which it's so hard to fucking say. <laughs> Benefit Wonderful World Blush? Anyway, there are two different formulas. I'm sorry, there's actually three. If you get either the matte, the satin, or the shimmer, it doesn't matter which one you fucking get, they're all fantastic. The satin and the shimmer blushes, while you might be like, ooh, I don't know, I might have some glitter in it, rest assured, nope, they do not. They are perfect. I really do love these colors. I hope they release more. It's not often that Benefit has a home run. The fact that these are home runs should be celebrated. <laughs> so these are fucking fantastic. Honestly, I really do hope that they keep up this energy in 2023. Just saying. I am obsessed obsessed with the Huda Glowish line. I really do love their blushes. It's so good and I have four of them. I have it in Caring Coral, Sassy Saffron, Milky Rose, and Healthy Peach. And they're just so good. They're so good. These have such like a soft, delicate glow that really gives you that beautiful natural rouge, that natural finish that we all love and look for in a blush. Like these are fantastic. I swear between this and the bronzer, like I really, really thought twice about Huda <laughs> Beauty because I've had such um, a roller coaster with them. So the fact that two things out of the same line would be fantastic is earth shatteringly amazing. I also love that these are buildable as well. So whether you want like a soft watercolor moment or whether you want to be a Cirque du Soleil clown, you can achieve both of those things. And I love that. So thank you, Huda. The next one I want to talk about is from Pat McGrath. How can I not talk about Mother? Now she came out with two fantastic blush formulas this year. The first one are these little blush duos, which I have to say, I like one more than the other. And this is the one that I love. This is the Venetian Sunrise. So it's kind of like a perfect pinky violet moment. This is stunning. I love this one so much. The other one that's really good as well is the Aphrodite Amour. Still very beautiful. It kind of has that pink nude moment, but the introduction of the lilac, I feel like just makes it that much more special. This formula compared to the next Pat McGrath one that I'm gonna talk about 
about. This one is a very beautiful formula, right? And I think the two colors just make for a very beautiful mix of just perfection. Like I, I don't know how to really explain it, but when using the duo, it just gives this perfect color. Probably the best way I can describe it. It's just, it's so good. I love how soft and delicate the formula is. It's really easy to apply and always just looks so beautiful and effortless. But the one formula that really just like turned my head this year, surprisingly enough, came from the Bridgerton collection. So I hate this. <laughs> I hate this stupid cheap cheap ass hat box thing. I hate the highlighter formula and it's garbage. But these blushes, where have you fucking been all my life, bitch? These are baked blushes. And it's a shame that they're stuck in this disgusting cardboard packaging. These deserve to be, I don't know, like draped in luxury. This is not luxury. <laughs> this is just fucking shitty. <laughs> I think what makes this particular formula unique is the blend. This blends so magically and majestically. And even if you turn yourself into a fucking clown, because these are incredibly pigmented, as you start to blend them and blend them, it just becomes so soft and seamless and just looks so good on the face. It's perfect. Again, very, very sad that they don't make this kind of formula. It's really, really sad because it's so beautiful. I also like combining the colors as well. There's something about it. I tell you, it's fucking great. Now, I'm sure you can find this in TJ Maxx. If you do, get it. I think it's like $24.99. You will not be disappointed. The packaging, you will hate. Both the insides are beautiful. Now, speaking of like fun, weird blushes, let's talk a little bit about Odin's Eye. So there was the Solomane 2 collection and the Sunlight Love Blushers. Ooh, bitch. First of all, the packaging is everything. The pan embossing is beautiful. And I love the little gradients within some of these blushes. Oh my God, they're fantastic. This one though was my favorite, unfortunately kind of got damaged, but this is Sunset Clouds. Oh, bitch. Ooh, such a good nudie pink color. My hand looks horrible right now. I was like, I'm not gonna swatch anything. I love the pearlescent formula in the Odin's Eye. It has a beautiful sheen that's not straight up glitter bukkake. Or if you get the matte, either way, you're not gonna be disappointed. I think the pearlescent ones are prettier because it just gives you that extra oomph, especially when you're at highlighter. So good. I love a glowy, glowy blush. And before I go into like liquids and stuff, the other one I do wanna mention too is Gucci. And I think it's probably my favorite blush, honestly, that I picked up this year. Gucci is a lot of things. And it's usually very elderly vagina smelling, <laughs> in my opinion anyway. But these blushes are so good. First of all, the packaging is 10 out of 10. They're fantastic, so beautiful, so simple, so elegant. Love the little colors that I got. I pretty much got, I believe the first four. So the Silky Rose, Bright Coral, the Tender Apricot, and the Radiant Pink. These are the ones that look best on me. And slowly but surely, I will collect them all. Just like motherfucking Pokemon, I will catch them all. The formula has such a luminous, just beautiful feel that, dare I say, I actually am starting to like these more than the Chantecaille blushes that I have. And I love my Chantecaille blushes. I think they're absolutely stunning. I actually think I like my Gucci ones a little bit more. They're so good, they're so good. Do yourself a favor. Do you need them all? No, you don't need them all, but you, you should get them all. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I kid, I kid. Obviously get the one that speaks to you, but for me, these all speak to me. So I need to have, I honestly don't have a favorite color. They're all my favorite. I can't pick between you babies. They're all so good. They're so good. I love them. They're fantastic. Like I said, my favorite formula that I found this year. Now, when it comes to creams, I have a couple of recommendations. Again, I mentioned Say again. I really love Say's cream products. I just think they're so good. The blushes do not disappoint. These are fantastic. Love the About Face blushes. Here's another product that I just needed to have all of them up and I'm not mad about it. Not disappointed. Yes, they kind of feel cheap. You know, I want more from the packaging, but who gives a fuck? The formula is so perfect and pretty. It's a nice balm. Looks just really good on the skin. Again, another product that just looks natural. Fucking love it. And they make a really good purple blush, just saying. So yeah, the formula is buildable. It's pigmented. It's the whole nine yards. It's so good. Don't let the cheap little packaging fool you. These bitches pack a punch. Of course, one of my latest favorite things is actually from Hindash, and it's the color fluid, which technically one of them should belong in the bronzer section, one is a blush. Okay, so <laughs> when I first tried this, I did it a try on, and I remember tagging Hindash, and he messaged me, he was like, Teresa, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> said it in not so many words, but he was just like, ah, uh, a little bit goes a long way. And I'm like, haha, tee hee. Thankfully, I figured that out in the video. But ever since then, I've been using this, which it's very true, a little bit does go a long way. It's perfect. 
These are truly one of those products that I feel like does a really good job for being just an all over face product. I usually find that when there's like a cheek product that could technically be a lip product, I don't love it as much, right? Like, or I kind of have to pick and choose what I want. These I think are fantastic, whether I put them on the lips or if I put them on the cheeks, doesn't fucking matter. These are so good. And again, a little bit goes a long way. So don't be scared of these. These are super user friendly. All you need is like one little dot, like a tiny little dot and let the formula do the rest. These are so good. They blend beautifully. Ugh, can't get enough of them. Plus the orange color. Oh my God, this is so good as a lipstick. It's fucking good. Also really good as a blush, but really good as a lipstick. Oh, you know what? I actually forgot to mention one thing and that is my collection. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't know, I came out with a collection with Lethal Cosmetics, Teresa's Lethal, and I made the coolest blushes ever. I made one look like bacon, exactly, bacon. <laughs> Plan 9 is my little bacon strip, it's so beautiful. And then of course I have Cryostasis, which basically looks like you landed on the prettiest moon possible. This is Lethal's Glowy Blush Formula, and it's so good, it's so fucking good. Now I think there might be a little stock left, and if so, there might be some at Lethal Cosmetics, and there might be some at camera ready. But once it's gone, it's motherfucking gone. So if you want a piece of bacon or look like you're landing on a planet, bitch, then you better act fast. <laughs> but they're so good. And it's probably, again, not to toot my own horn, beep, beep, bitch, one of my favorite things that I have uh, found this year. So I love it. Anyway, thank you, Lethal, for making all my slutty dreams come true. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna move on to highlighters. So moving on to highlighters, you know, I didn't find a lot of good ones this year, which is kind of sad, but I did find a lot of good indie brands. That said, I love the duochrome multi-chrome moment. So with that said, starting with my baby Lethal, <laughs> which I'm gonna show you the other stuff that is in this palette. These are all the duo, which I'm, I'm sure my lights are washing these out. These are the duochrome formulas, including the one that I created with them. And then as well as their just regular highlighter formula, but their duochrome formula, it's super fucking special very sparkly very slutty they are the moment for sure and I have to say I love my white highlighter eviscerate is everything I want it to be and more so if you're looking for an icy bitch moment look no further but I do love my green duochrome moon rock bitch you will feel like you're in outer space when wearing it so with that said I love lethal's formula this year their duochrome formula has been fantastic now regarding highlighters right I only want to highlight the true alien sluts so I'm only going to talk about the one that you can be seen from outer space but oddly natural as well. And that can be buffed into the cheek so beautifully and so naturally, even though you can legally blind someone. Starting with Odin's Eye. Odin's Eye made some beautiful formula. So this is in the Solomane collection. These are the Moonlight Feel Highlighters. These are wonderful. Again, very similar to their blushes. The packaging is 10 out of 10. The pan embossing is 10 out of 10. And the shifts of these little fuckers are so good. <laughs> They're so sparkly and so beautiful. I love them. I feel like this to me is like the true definition of ethereal. They are super, super special. Now there were three indie brands this year that released duochrome multi-chrome palettes and I loved each one. But to me, I think there are two that are the best. I love this one. This is from Bella Beauty Bar. This is the Oracle Chrome Highlighter Palette. This one is so good. This is so good. Well, yes, the formula on this one is a little bit powdery. The shifts are absolutely stunning and there wasn't too much glitter because Cocky. The other one that I f I'm obsessed with, I love, is from Sugar Drizzle. And this is the On Top of the Mountain and Beneath the Stars highlighter palette. What is different about this one is that it has a much more like slick emollient type of base. I love these as highlighters and I love these for the inner corner as well as the highlighter. Another formula that just looks so seamless when put on, doesn't have a lot of glitter bukkake and is just so fucking in your face. It's not even funny. I love it. Now I really do like the Blend Bunny one, but I like these a little bit more than that palette. The next highlighter I would recommend is from Jaclyn Cosmetics. I have tried quite a few things from Jaclyn Cosmetics and this is by far one of the best things that they've put out there. They know what they're doing when it comes to highlighters for the most part. And this one just doesn't disappoint. This is the Reflective Light Putty Highlighter. The glow is unbelievable. Like I still can't believe it. It's so white and blinding and so shiny. It is so good. It's everything you want it to be. It's so good. I really am trying my best. <laughs> my best not to swatch stuff because my hand hurts <laughs> but I can't help it when it comes to highlighters it's like I just want to touch them because highlighters are my favorite thing this is by far probably one of the most blinding sluttiest wet looking highlighters I have ever used in my life and I want them to come out with more shades this reminds me of that palette that came out in 2019 that I still obsess over that I love and I will never get rid of that is a beautiful formula and this is right up there 
This is so good. The formula is so silky and smooth and just melts into your skin. And under the sun, I swear, if you had this highlighter on, you could blind a whole city. <laughs> This is so good, so good. Another great highlighter I found this year was from House Labs. This is in the shade Moonstone. This is such a pretty silver highlight. I know I don't wanna keep swatching stuff, but this is so good, it's so good. See how red my skin's getting? All right, we gotta stop, we gotta stop. <laughs> It's getting bad. I swear, my eczema's getting so bad today. Any hoosies, this is such a good highlighter. It's smooth, it's buttery, it packs a punch, and I love the silver color. It's really, really unique to my collection. I don't have anything like it. The best way I can describe it is that it's still icy, but it's different from a white highlighter. It's so beautiful. I swear, everything from the rebrand, like I said, has been fantastic. The other one I just, I'm obsessed with and I love to pieces is from Charlotte Tilbury. And this is the Pillow Talk highlighter. This is so good that I actually had to buy a second one up because the pan embossed is pretty much rubbed off almost. This pillow top one, this is so goddamn bright. And I think that's why I was sad initially when I tried the face palette because I wanted it to be that. But when I realized it was kind of like a different kind of a slut, <laughs> Then I was like, okay, I get it, I get it. But this is wonderful. I love that there are four different shades in the pan. And when you sweep your brush across all four, it creates such a glow that has beautiful dimension and just really just looks so good, Jim, good. Yes, there is a little bit of glitter in it, but I don't find it to be overwhelming or emphasize any of my bullshit. I think it just looks so seamless and beautiful and perfect. This is fantastic. Before I get into my favorite one that I found this year, the one that is like a recent favorite is from Rare Beauty. So this one just came out. It's called Enlightened. I can't stop wearing it. It's so so fucking good. I cannot stop wearing it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I wish that I got another color, but unfortunately they're still sold out. This is so good. This is, again, you could tell that I really like a specific kind of highlighter. I really love being seen from outer space and this does not disappoint. The formula, when I first saw it from pictures, I was like, oh, this is not going to swatch very good. The swatch was like really breathtaking, but when it's on the face, it's so glowy. It has incredible longevity. It's everything you want it to be. And I'm just so happy with this formula. It's just amazing. So highly recommend this one. Last but not certainly not least, let's talk about Pat McGrath. You know, I've been going through a lot of emotions with this brand. There have been some great shit. There have been some shitty shit. <laughs> But I think their highlighters, specifically their single highlighters, is some of the best formula out there. So from the Bridgerton collection, there was a single highlighter that was absolutely stunning, fucking amazing from the pan embossing to the formula. It's just so good. These are like the definition of like that wet to dry formula. It's just so good. Even from the holiday palettes, what saves them is the highlighters in these guys. Oof. So beautiful. They're just so gorgeous. And honestly, the highlighters in the holiday palettes are the only reason why I'm keeping it. Even though the blushes are kind of funky, it's the highlighter that's making me save them. <laughs> The ones that I really, really loved though this year was their single highlighters when they released, I believe the blush duos. <gasps> Are you fucking? <laughs> like a pizza pie. What the fuck? I think I'm in utter shock. <laughs> I'm in utter shock. Fuck. I really am so fucking pissed. I, I, ah, uh, motherfucker. Okay, so then, <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> I don't even know what I was gonna say about them. <laughs> All right, um, fuck. So what I would have probably said before that, <laughs> That happened. <sighs> okay, it's so weird. I've never. That was the. That was the first time. Wow, I can't believe both of them did that. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. So. What initially I was gonna say, the reason why they are my favorite formula as of late, <laughs> I don't know anymore, I don't know now, but what I was gonna say, I like that the formula is very smooth and it melts into the skin like butter. It also crumbles into the carpet. <laughs> I 
And I love that while it's so bright and just full of life, it also just blends so beautifully that it looks really natural. So while you do have like a really fucking wild ass like just glow to your face, it looks like it's supposed to be there. It doesn't look like a stripe on your face. It looks super natural and I just love it. It's ethereal. It's everything you want it to be. It's perfection. And I think regarding high-end formulas, you know, to me <laughs> it was the best of the best until two highlighters crumbled before my very eyes. <sighs> So that said, I was gonna say these would never disappoint me, but I feel like that day has come. 2022 has been an awful weird year and um, yeah, yeah, I'm ready for this year to end, aren't you? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, but yeah, those are the highlighters that I recommend. Maybe not all the Pat McGrath ones, maybe just the one from the Bridgerton collection. Maybe just that one. All right, moving on. So next products I wanna talk about are some eyeliners and <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get the fuck over that just, I can't get over it. The next products I wanna talk about are some mascaras and eyeliners. I'm gonna start with eyeliners first. Now, listen, y'all know it's no surprise that of course, Leith Cosmetics is always gonna be number one, but I found two eyeliners that have exceeded my expectations this year. And the first one goes to Kaleidos. They have made, hands down, the best multi-chrome eyeliner that I have ever used. I love the ones I've tried from Sugar Drizzle. I think they're really good, but I think when I compare them to this one, it's a no-brainer. These are so pigmented they last all goddamn day and the shift is so visible. I am someone that likes to wear stuff in my waterline. I'm not so much a decorative eyeliner bitch. So for me, I need them to show up. These show up and then some, and then it takes a little bit of elbow grease to remove them from the waterline. And that to me is amazing considering I have the world's wateriest eyes. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word, but we'll make it a word today. I have very watery eyes. If the wind blows, I'm crying. And the fact that these stay, <sighs> So good. There's not a bad one in the bunch. Any of the colors you can get, rest assured, you're gonna be in good hands. These are amazing. They're so good that I have backups because that's how much I love them and that's how much I use them. I think this paired with a neutral eye look, bitch, you look stunning and it's what I have on my face today and I love it. The other ones I recommend are from a brand named Colfi. The underlying Kajal eyeliner pencils are everything. These are what I want ColourPop pencils to be. ColourPop when they're good, they're good, but when they're bad, they're bad, and it's very, very hit or miss with their pencils. These are fantastic. They're incredibly creamy, they're pigmented, and again, have incredible longevity. You don't have to worry about this leaving your face. These stay in the waterline. There's no fading, no flaking. You can actually even create like an ombre effect with them too. These are awesome. And such a pleasant surprise. I really hope they start releasing more colors. But with the ones that I do have, I think they're beautiful, but I need more. I'm selfish, I need more. Again, I haven't found a dud in the bunch yet. Again, this is what I want ColourPop to be. These are awesome. So for mascaras, I found three that I just cannot shut the hell up about. The first one is the Lancome Lash Idol, blah, 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 blah. This one, this one's so good. Y'all know, or if you're new here, I don't fuck with false lashes. I think they're stupid. It, they just, I, I don't know. I just think they look ridiculous. Whatever, anyway. So for me, it's like, I wanna make sure that my eyelashes are seen and heard. <laughs> so I look for things that give me length, volume, and separation. I don't want any clumpy bullshit. This one gives me everything I need and it doesn't flake, which is a bonus. It lifts, it separates, and it just does a great job of giving me volume. But dare I say, I found an even better one than that, although I do love the Lancome one, which is so great. I think the Tower 28 is probably the best one that I've tried this year in terms of formula. This is also, I think, meant for sensitive eyes, which is wonderful. This is the Make Waves mascara. They need to come up with new colors. This is $20, and for the longest time, I was a firm believer that I could not find a better mascara than the Chantecaille one. Chantecaille mascara, I think, is $72. It's fucking expensive, and anytime there was a sale, I would always buy backup because $72 is a hard pill to swallow. But what I like about that specific mascara is everything that this one does and it's a fraction of the price. It lifts, it separates, it gives me volume, it doesn't fall, it doesn't flake, it doesn't transfer. This is everything. And it's one of the best black mascaras I've ever used in my life. It's impossible to get your lashes clumpy. This just lifts and separates and just does wonders. I love this goddamn little mascara. It's so good. I just need more colors. If this comes in brown, game over, bitch. Like, that, I, this, is, this is all I need. This is so good. But the last mascara I want to talk about is actually um, from Charlotte Tilbury. And this is the Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes. This is in the shade Dream Pop. Now, I've tried the 
push-up lashes in the past. I hated it. I didn't think it did anything good. I thought the black mascara sucked. It's probably one of the worst mascaras I've ever tried. So I was a little apprehensive to try this, but when I saw the color, which is kind of like a really pretty, like maroony kind of a brown color, this is fantastic. It does a really great job of lifting and separating the whole nine yards. But what I love about it is the color. The color is not quite brown, right? But it's not a red. It's like right in the middle. It looks really, really good, especially if you have blue eyes like myself, not to toot my own horn. But I think it really just makes my eyes pop even more. I love how my eyelashes look full and just fucking sexy and I love that and this also doesn't flake so another reason why I love it but um yeah these have been just a godsend so goddamn good love 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 them <sighs> are we done yet no we're not done yet we are not done I still have a list of fucking eyeshadow palettes <laughs> let's move on to eyeshadow palettes I have tried quite a few this year that is an understatement I'm sure that said I really wanted to be more cutthroat about this I've tried many palettes this year that have great formulas but I don't reach for them as often. So this list is comprised of things that I reach for all the time. These palettes have a mix of incredible formula to pretty good formula. I think for me the common theme here is one, how often I pick them up, and two, how fun they are to play with. These are the palettes that I don't want to wash my face up at the end of the night. Like that's how good they are. These are the palettes that I cannot wait to slap on my eye holes. And these are the palettes that just get me excited to play with makeup. So without further ado, these are my best in my humble little opinion, best palettes I played with in 2022. And obviously, just to be that bitch, Teresa's lethal. <laughs> Teresa's lethal. But I just want to point out this one, this silver TV dinner. That is a Tin Man Dick silver. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyway, obviously this one, duh, no shit. I love the one-up palette. This was a great palette. Not only was the packaging fun, but look how cute this is. If you love video games, this is for you. So cute. The Night Flower palette as well. Such a beautiful purple palette. This is so good. If you're familiar with Lethal Shadows and you know exactly what you're working with, these do not disappoint. In terms of a basic bitch palette, Chantecaille. The Giraffe Quartet, which I don't know if you can get this anymore. I don't think you can actually get it on Chantecaille's website, but you could probably find it at like Saks or something. This is a great basic bitch moment. If you haven't seen my basic bitch palette video, I will link it in the corner. This is awesome. Another great indie find was from Fantasy Cosmetica, the Bard palette. Perfect, perfect fall palette. The yellow is awesome, but what really shines here are the shimmers. They're just so wet and slutty. <laughs> I want to know how many times I said that today. I feel like I said it about a hundred fucking times. Another indie brand that is fantastic is Sugar Drizzle. The MILF palette. This was so good. She is well loved. As you can see, like it's, it's kind of a little bit decimated. This was another palette that just had such beautiful shifts. I love Sugar Drizzle's formula. They make some beautiful multi-chromes. They have a really good price point. And their formulas are just so like easy to work with. And if you're new to multi-chromes, I recommend checking out this brand. The MILF palette was my favorite palette that they put out this year. Another indie release that was amazing is from Shroud. This is the, the Batty Bean palette. This is the Hello Bean palette. <laughs> so many beans in there. I love this one. This is so good. Betty Jean did such a great job. And what I like about this palette, not to toot my own horn, I feel like it's a very beautiful sister palette to my Teresa's Lethal. I just think the two pair together so well. And I had a lot of fun playing with them together. They're multi chrome formula is really good and I just love this really kind of pukey kind of like a brown green shade crypt one of my favorite shades it's such a like a unique basic bitch kind of a shade but it's just so pretty this I love so much this is tart I know tart man eater this one was fun. This is another great fall palette. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I hated that palette. That palette was dog shit. So this is kind of like my Metropolis and I'm okay with that. I have two ColourPop palettes that were great. First one was the C3PO or CP3PO as I like calling it. This great basic bitch palette. The golds are outstanding. And there's like a super shock formula in here too, which is fantastic. And I kind of really love this one. It's so basic. This is not a box of chocolates. This was so, <laughs> I actually kind of really like this one. At first I was kind of like, oh, okay. Like, hmm. But the more I use it, the more I play with it, the more I'm like, oh, this is just kind of like a good basic bitch palette. Not my favorite ColourPop formula, but it's just a lot of fun to play with. So if you're looking for something that's like a no frills, this is for you. You know, when it comes to Tommy Ford, little old Tommy Ford, ah! I hate these stupid brushes. They're garbage. There are two formulas I want to talk about. So the first one is their cream formula, right? I 
cannot stop talking about this one. This is the Rose Topaz. Everything that I've ever gotten from the cream formula, not all of them are amazing. They're still very good. But to me, the, my favorite one is the Rose Topaz as well as the Violet one. I love this one. So I feel like these two in terms of cream formula are fantastic. I know they kind of look like I chewed them up a little bit, but rest assured they are loved. I love this cream formula. I've said it a million times. I don't understand Tom Ford quads. I don't quite get them, but the cream formula is everything. And it's actually what I currently have on my eyes today. I just, I'm upset. I love it. It's my go-to palette when I just want to be a badass, rich-looking bitch. I love it. The other Tom Ford palette, which is kind of surprising, but I really love this formula, is the Opry Skis palette. I thought, okay, I don't understand this. this is going to be some kind of bullshit. This is good. It's very simple, very simple, and very, like... It almost feels very one note, but when you have it on your eyes, it's actually really fucking beautiful and stunning. And it makes me kind of side eye the brand a little bit because I'm like, I want to try more stuff like this. But I know not everybody loves these kind of quads. So if you were going to pick up Tom Ford, pick them up on sale. Obviously, these are really expensive. They're really, really fucking expensive. So definitely do not pay full price, but... These were a lot of fun to play with. The next one would be another high end is from Natasha Denona. Like I mentioned before, I really love this whole collection. My dream collection was really, really good. From the eyeshadow palette to the lip product, everything has been fucking amazing. Love this. I don't really have a bad thing to say about the palette other than like, you know, okay, maybe the multi-chrome is not like the best multi-chrome to ever exist, which is whatever, who cares? But the rest of the formula is really good. I normally have some kind of like eye irritations with the brand. I didn't experience anything with this brand. And I found this formula to be very, very solid. For a $65 palette, which usually I feel like has the worst kind of quality, had the best, so love this one. Another really good indie brand is Unearthly Cosmetics. So they recently came out with this palette. So this is kind of like a recent favorite of mine. This is Dead of Night. I had this on... Fuck, if I can remember the video, I'll link it up here. Everybody was asking me like, what the hell's on your face? What the hell's on your face? And it was this palette. This is another beautiful, perfect purple palette. It's so, uh, the mattes are so buttery and smooth and they just blend so effortlessly. And the shimmers are just fucking amazing. I think what's great about Unearthly Cosmetics, they have really unique color stories, but their longevity is really good. Even in this bog ass fucking disgusting heat, this shit lasts on your face. So this definitely check out. And I think by the time this video goes up, their store should be up. So definitely go check this out. The other palette I want to mention is from Danessa Myrick. So this is the Lightwork Volume 2. Nope, Volume 4. I don't know what number this is. This was a great palette. Yes, she's expensive. She's $125. But I think for what you get, it's totally worth the money. The top row, and the bottom row are just infused with such beautiful multi-chromes, all different kind of color multi-chromes so you don't feel like you're getting the same one. There's a lot of variety here. And then of course you have the shades in the middle, which are your water activated shades. You can have a nice liner moment and you can even have these like little flaky guys here, which are not my super favorite, but they are pretty easy to work with. Overall, if you are new to multi-chromes and you do not want to go with like an indie route because you don't know if you might like them or not. I say Danessa Myricks is probably gonna be your best bet in terms of variety. This is kind of surprising, I know, but Flower Beauty came out with this really cute, stupid palette. This is the ET palette. It's basic as fuck. <laughs> It looks like a little DVD case. I love it. This exceeded my expectations. I couldn't believe how good this was. This has no business being this good. If you see it, get it. There's a nice silver in here. There are some actually really nice duochrome moments. The mattes are really easy to work with and they're pigmented and they have good longevity. Like you can't fuck this one up. It's so good. Obviously the Urban Decay Naked Robin Eisenberg palette. So I've had a very, you know, just a very weird year with Urban Decay. And I feel like this is the first palette they've done right in a long time. She's kind of like a basic bitch rainbow moment. I really, really, really enjoyed the mattes in here. They're the classic Urban Decay mattes, but I think what sells it for me is the shimmers. They're actually like metallic. They're proper shimmers. This is what I've been waiting for for Urban Decay and they do not disappoint. I know. This is the... <laughs> This is the one size Fantasia palette. This doesn't look like much. She doesn't. I initially only wanted it just for the blushes because I love their blush formula. Their eyeshadows are phenomenal. They're so good. And these little guys up here are eye toppers, but you should use them as highlighters. These will not disappoint you. Everything about this, yes, it's basic, but it's fucking beautiful. This is great formula. Another basic bitch palette. How can we not love this one? This is from Clamonatrix. This is the nearly natural. I always want to call it neutral, but this is the nearly natural. One of my favorites. I know I talked recently about this in my basic bitch video but if you've never tried glaminatrix i would say they're known for their colorful color stories right like because they have some really beautiful ones this just tugs at my heartstrings this is so perfect everything about this palette is perfect i wouldn't change a goddamn thing in the world this is awesome another neutral option is from blend bunny the all done up palette this is gorgeous oh my god 
they're so good. I really like the quality of Blend Bunny shimmers. I mean, the mattes are kind of my favorite thing, but the shimmers in this one in particular, they're just, I know I wasn't gonna swatch anything, but I wanna swatch these two. They're so glowy and beautiful, and they're just everything you want them to be. And while I have loved their more rainbow palettes, I think what I kind of gravitate and reach for more time than I would like or care to admit for is their neutral palettes. I just think they make such good staple pieces. And the all done up one is the newer one. This one does not disappoint. So, ba 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 Talk about some Odin's eyes. So we have the Gila palette. This is the collaboration with um, Angelica Nikvist, my good friend here on YouTube. This is beautiful. I love this one. I love Angie's choices of colors. I think she she's just my colorful bitch. I love her. And I just love the greens. I love the pinks. I just thought overall this was a great fucking palette. And aesthetically, even fucking better. This is fantastic. Um, if you got this, then you know how good this is. And if you missed it, I'm so sorry. But you missed out on a great fucking palette. And the other palette that I want to mention is the Christmas Eve palette. Although the Merry Christmas palette, I actually was holding this in my hand. I really do like it. I don't want to put this on the list because I think this one is better. The Christmas Eve palette, which unfortunately is not available anymore. Um, this is like the perfect winter palette. It actually kind of also gives me a little bit like Hanukkah vibes too, because of all the blue and kind of the silver in it. It's just so pretty. This is just like a beautiful holiday palette overall. I love this one. And this shade, gorgeous. <sighs> They're multi-chrome, it's so good, it's so good. Odin's Eye, don't sleep on them. They make aesthetically pleasing shit and their formula is top notch. And then, am I almost done? I think I'm almost done. Second to last we have is Nomad Cosmetics. Nomad Cosmetics came out, I'm gonna just call this a sloth palette because I cannot pronounce the name of it. Uh, but this is the Costa Rican palette, right? This is my colorful palette. I love this so much. You know what's so funny? This kind of reminds me a little bit of um, a colored ring palette that I had and that I really kind of liked, but then I kind of stopped really using it. Like I, I wasn't really getting a lot of use out of it. And then I found kind of this one that kind of has like a similar color story in a way, but I like the quality and the formula of this so much more. I love the shimmers. I love the mattes. If you've never tried Nomad, you are fucking missing out. They come out with such beautiful, thoughtful palettes that just, uh, they're so nice. The Haunted in Europe one specifically is probably one of my favorites, but I do love this one because I love a good colorful moment and this is just perfect for like spring and summer it's so good plus there's a sloth on the palette that's probably like the biggest reason why this is on the list <laughs> but i love it though it's so good and then the last two that i want to talk about is from the brand bella beauty bar so bella beauty bar came out with a lot of stuff this year but the celestial garden which is a collaboration with m jones she's a wonderful instagrammer that usually has the best motherfucking swatches her palette was fantastic the mattes were great the shimmers were great but what really sold me on this palette were the cake liners i was never one to like cake liners because i just never really found the right brand for me yep it all went out the window when i got to try this one these are so good and i also love that one they have incredible longevity they're really easy to use and they're sensitive eye friendly so don't worry if you have sensitive eyes and you're kind of scared of them they're perfect did i put them in my waterline no but I put them above the lash line and they looked really, really good. I love this. This is just kind of a lot of fun to play with and I really love using this formula. Technically, this should have belonged in my eyeliners, but I figured since I knew I was gonna talk about it, that's why it's here. And then last but not least, we have the Strange and Unusual palette. I think this is probably one of my favorite Halloween releases other than Betty Jean's palette. This was so good. This is like another kind of grungy, colorful palette. Has a lot of beautiful multi-chromes, a lot of beautiful shimmers, a lot of beautiful mattes. The neon shade here too, just super pretty, very, vibrant but i really love lost souls though it's they had some really good miss argentina did not disappoint like these are just so pretty i discovered this brand this year and they have lived up to everything i want them to be and more and i'm so excited to see what else they're going to be doing they're going to keep this up baby sky is the motherfucking limit i love it i love it i love it i love it so yes we love that and i think that's pretty much it when it comes to palettes. So I think the last thing I wanna talk about are lip products. I'm gonna be very quick because this video is way too long as it is and I am tired. I'm tired of talking. I'm not gonna mention Natasha Denona because I feel like I mentioned it already and it, I still feel true. Like all of the stuff from the My Dream collection is great. Okay, so moving past that, I think my favorite lip product that I have found this year have been Dior lip oils. Dior lip oils are fucking everything and I love them. I need to put some on my face right now because my lips need some hydration. These are so good. They're so good. They're not sticky. They're so hydrating. These are replacing lip balm for me. Yes, they're expensive, but they're so worth every fucking penny. 
when I tell you I have these all over my house, that's how much I use them. I've gone through a few of them actually, because that's how much I use them. I love the doe foot. I love the formula. It's not sticky. It's just nice and plumping and it's just perfect. If I don't feel like wearing chapstick, this is like my go-to thing. It just provides such a beautiful shine, especially when I have no makeup on. It's just like, I don't know, it just makes me just feel like I'm put together, even though my face just looks horrible. <laughs> At least my lips are comfortable. The other lip oil I want to mention are the ones from Lunar Beauty. So they recently came out over the holiday, they had a holiday collection. They came out with two lip oils, the Love Me and the Tease Me. Again, fantastic. If you're looking for good lip oils, Dior, Lunar Beauty. I recently also got acquainted with Clarins, which I don't know where you are, Clarins. Clarins should be in this drawer, but it's not. I recently started trying Clarins and I like them too, but I think I like my Dior and my Lunar more, but I still like it though. I think it's very, very pretty, but I think I like them more. Sorry. <laughs> and then of course, I think in terms of lipstick, there are quite a few things I just grabbed. One, let's start with lipsticks, the Gorgiou lipsticks. They're hydrating, a really good formula, very comfortable on the lips, doesn't dry your shit out. What makes them really fun is that they have little food items <laughs> at the bottom. These are some pancakes. We love that. The next one would be from Smashbox. Who would ever think I would be talking about Smashbox, but here we are. The Master of Horrors collection is everything. It's what I actually had on my lips for most of this video until I put some Dior lip oil on. It's so good. The formula that I actually bought three more of these. I know. The Chucky one, the perfect, perfect pinky beige nude. In terms of liquid lipsticks, I've tried the House Labs one, you know, mm. It's not for me. What is for me though is from Urban Decay. Their Vice Glossy Bond. I don't even remember the name of this. This liquid <laughs> lipstick is fabulous. This is probably the first liquid lipstick I've ever had that actually is hydrating and doesn't suffocate my lips. This is amazing. Next one would be from Chantecaille. Listen, any of their lip cheeks or any of their lip veils or any of their new collections, regardless if their eyeshadow palettes are good or not, their lip products will never fail. This is amazing, especially the ones that came out with the Giraffe collection as well as the Cougar collection as well, but I love the Giraffe ones. They were so good. Last but not least, let's talk about Christian Audet. Christian Audet makes beautiful lipsticks. I love their cases. I love their glow glosses. You will not be disappointed. But more specifically, there were two collaborations that I really enjoyed this year. My girl Tara Lynn. Tara Lynn made the perfect peachiest nude ever. I love this one. This is the Bare Nectar lipstick. She created a color that just looks good on everybody. How, like, how is that even possible? I don't know, but Tara cracked the fucking code. The other one is Ray, which is a beautiful peachy gloss so gorgeous. The other one that's really good that I don't have because it's right now downstairs is the Lisa Duncan collection. Lisa Duncan came out with the Golden Hour lipstick, which is a very beautiful pink neutral lipstick. Gorgeous. And then there's a lip liner as well. It's Paradise Suited Lip. Both of those two have been wonderful. So yes, don't sleep on Christian Audette, especially for the glow glosses. Bitch, they're so good. They're so good. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I feel hot, I feel sweaty. There was a lot of stuff going on. I think I'm still mad about the Pat McGrath highlighter. <laughs> Cause every time I look down, I get more visibly upset because it's sitting on top of the fucking hip dot box right now. Now I wanna hear from y'all, let me know down below what have been some of your favorites this year. I would love to know, maybe we have some of the same shit, maybe we don't. Either way, I would love to hear from you. Definitely check out Monday's video for the worst of beauty because that is going to be a fun list to do. <laughs> anyway, thank you again to Upside for sponsoring today's video. And y'all, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. As always, feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's free and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and to my beautiful patrons and YouTube members. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really filthy, really trashy, really gross, really nasty, really disgusting garbage boat afloat. I couldn't do without you. And I love your adorable little delicious faces. And I just want to gobble you all up so you can live inside my belly and we could be one and we could have a great old time. Reality, just a great old time. I love you all and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.